everyone. My name is Denis Cornet and I'm a crop physiologist at CIRAB. I'm working on yam since more than 20 years now and on yam phenotyping methods since the last 10 years. The main goal of this presentation is to draw an overview of image analysis techniques and show their potential for yam phenotyping. I will introduce some theoretical concepts and definitions that are essential to start a phenotyping activity based on image analysis. And the practical aspect of image acquisition will be detailed during the day on Thursday. This presentation will go through the main steps of the image analysis pipeline, starting from image acquisition to interpretation. Each step will be illustrated by concrete case from agronomy and often from YAM improvement. All these steps are carried out using open source software, software or programming languages like R, Python, OpenCV, and so on. The digital image can be defined as a set of pixels or voxels if we worked in 3D to which are associated numerical values. The image size is simply defined as the number of pixels making up the image. For instance, the image of sorg and stem here under is composed of 32 by 32 pixels, so 1024 pixels. Each image must be associated with a scale. For example, here the green line is equivalent to 2 mm. This scale is essential in order to calculate the real size of a pixel. In this example, one pixel covers an area of 0 0.035 square millimeter. If the size of the image is reduced, then the size of the pixel is reduced proportionally and we therefore lose resolution. As we can see here, the size of the pixel must be considered beforehand in order to answer the scientific question. The first image allows a cell count. The second one only allows to quantify the cell clusters, while the last one does not allow much more. As a rule of thumb, the pixel size should always be three times smaller than the smallest detail we want to study on the image. It may seem obvious, but it is, if it is possible to decrease the resolution of an image, it is not possible to increase it, despite the Miami CSI. Enhancing contrast, detection, contour, or deconvolution is possible, but inventing information not initially present on a picture remains more art than science. One last property of the image is the coding of its color. This one can, for example, be coded in black and white, grayscale, or true color. Each time, the amount of information carried out by the pixel will be different and therefore the space needed to store the image too. Depending on the scientific question, there is now a huge diversity of imaging techniques. Users can choose amongst different spatial scales, from microscopy up to landscape, different temporal scales, single acquisition or regular follow-up of the same scene, and finally a spectral scale, because we have now the possibility to possibility to go further than visible wavelengths, with, for instance, hyperspectral camera that will be presented by Karima Megar in the next presentation. There is also many techniques allowing to enhance visualization, including coloration, fluorescence, or genetic modification. Even if this presentation and the following training focus on visible imaging using camera, Many other devices exist and can help to analyze tissue structure and functionality. For instance, full field microscopy, X-ray tomography, or MRI. Once the image acquired, it is sometimes necessary to apply some correction or filter in order to allow for a correct interpretation. Image pretreatments include improvement using geometry or intensity correction but can also focus on image alignment, whatever in time, space, or mode. The correction of the distortion related to the convex lens, such as Fitch eye, is a fairly common problem. It occurs, for instance, with many models of multispectral camera used to phenotype YAM nutrition, for instance. The further from the center of the image, the greater the distortion and the less the distance are respected. It is therefore possible to introduce a geometric correction to compensate for this. While drones are not available, the use of handheld camera complicates the shooting perpendicular to the field, and objects that are rectangular on the ground can appear trapezoidal on the image. In order for each pixel to have the same weight, 
in the interpretation, it is necessary to correct the perspective distortion. Another common situation is vignetting. Vignetting is a modification of an image's brightness or saturation towards the periphery compared to the center of the image. Again, a simple geometric correction can improve its rendering. But the most common problem using digital camera rely to the heterogeneous light intensity. Whether the source is a camera model, the lightning environment, or the focus option, the same scene is often rendered very differently. In the example below, the colors of the reference chart seem to change between camera or lightning type. However, they are the same colors. If you want to be able to compare the result between the picture, it is necessary to introduce a color correction. In this example, a luminance correction allows to return to true color and thus to better characterize the stage of ripeness of banana. As you can see, the detection of a light intensity problem and its correction was only made possible thanks to the color reference chart. During the practical exercise on Thursday, we will see how to build our own color reference chart in order to ensure the repeatability of the color measurements whether it is by image analysis or visual assessment. Once image improved and before interpretation, it could be necessary to align multiple images. Here the objective is to align image taken with different angle of view due to sensor position on the device, but also due to the UAV movement. Aligning image allows to build a composite image and derive the AM vegetation indices for each genotype in the field. It is becoming more and more possible to combine images from several sensors. In order to allow a multimodal analysis, again it is necessary to align the different images. In this example, a digital camera, an X-ray and MRI images are combined to better identify disease progression in vine stock. Finally, images can also be combined in time in order to detect and analyze dynamics. In this example, image alignment allows to distinguish between respective contribution of cell division and elongation during morphogenesis of Arabidopsis floral bud. After the acquisition of the image and their pre-processing, it remains to interpret them. The interpretation is based on the measurement of physical phenomena alone or in combination with object recognition. When it comes to characterizing the color of an object with heterogeneous or irregular surface, image analysis is particularly useful compared to conventional techniques such as chromometer. If the latter has the advantage of standardizing the process of color measurement, the measurement windows remain small and it's mainly adapted to flat surface. Image analysis allows to characterize all the surface in once without risk of sampling bias. Here, image analysis allows to compare tuber color of different YAM genotype. From the color value, it is possible to derive indices that will summarize the useful information of the image. For instance, looking at the evolution of a whiteness index for YAM allows to quantify discoloration and oxidation of the tuber surface in time. Thresholding is another useful technique for image analysis. It allows to separate pixels of interest from their background using color threshold values. It allows, for instance, to distinguish YAM cover from soil in order to study YAM ground cover dynamic. But when the objects of interest are more heterogeneous, it is possible to detect them using a multi-criteria approach based, for example, on the size, shape, and color of the object. This allows, for example, to detect color patches of the reference chart in order to test the repeatability and quantify the measurement error within a study. Depending on the objectives, many other techniques exist in order to identify the region of interest. For example, if you want to distinguish between two objects that are touching each other, it is possible to use the watershed algorithm. This in this example, it allows to identify each starch grain of a yam flower in order to characterize its shape and size.
Once each starch grain is identified, it is possible to use some classification model to link the shape characteristic to the shape classes usually, usually used in the literature, round, uh, ovoid, elongated, or triangular, for instance. I would like to finish this presentation by emphasizing the precaution to take when working on image analysis. The image is the medium of the scientific information studied. As we will see on Thursday, the image contains not only the color values, but also a large amount of metadata on the sensors and its specificities. As such, the raw image must be kept intact, and all the transformations that will be performed later must be recorded to ensure the traceability and repeatability of the analysis. As much as possible, it is necessary to avoid compression, such as JPEG conversion, and useless manipulation, which often results in loss of information. To end on a humorous note, we should always pay attention not to enhance the visualization beyond what is necessary, in order not to detect false positives. To illustrate this risk, researchers applied a filter classically used in neuroscience to detect happiness in human patients. The they applied it to the frozen salmon's brain they bought in supermarkets, and they were able to show that the salmon were not only alive, but also happy. These results, obviously false, have challenged the practice of neuroscience, so be cautious while uh, using enhancing techniques. I would like to thank Romain Fernandez and Mathieu Dejean from CIRAD who helped me document this presentation with examples from different scientific domains. And I thank you all for listening.